everyone. Are you all well? Yay! Yeah. Hey, there you are. Oh, look at that. The last time I saw my name written that many times was on the wall of a toilet in the town that I'm from. <laughs> but look how far I've come. Hooray! Yeah. Which is also quite similar to something else that was written on the wall of the toilet. <laughs> I'm just delighted to be here, really. I'm just really happy to be here. I feel a bit like um, Niall Horan, One Direction. Do you know what I mean? For those of you who don't know, One Direction is like a group of singing children made up entirely of fringes and inappropriate thoughts. Do you know what I mean? And Niall Horan's like the Irish one. And he's just so happy to be there, you know, because like the group is made up of like four angels and Niall. And <laughs> Niall is just a normal lad. He is all of us. And he's just so delighted to be there. Like you always see the camera panning across them all, you know, and it's just like, you're insecure. Don't know what for. You're turning heads as you walk through the door. Yeah, there's Niall at the end and he's just like, not doing the same things as anyone else. Just clicking away. Winking, winking away. Winking's like Irish heroin, you know, or, mm, ah, we love that. Do you know what I mean? Everyone says, oh, Ashley, you know, um, you shouldn't be so hard on Niall, you know, because he's, you know, the one in the group. But you know that he is hoovering up the poo nanny that the pretty ones don't want. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just delighted to be here. Um, I often, I often have to go back, you know, to visit my mother in Ireland. And um, she thinks I live this crazy life in London where I, like, brush my teeth with cocaine and wipe my arse with money. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so she thinks... She thinks that every time I go home to Ireland, she has to, like, remind me about death, you know. So I come in the door, I'm like, Hey, Mammy, how are you? How is it? Great to be home. Well, you'll never believe who's dead. And you're like... <laughs> Hell, come on. And then what ensues is what I can only describe as a game of death, guess who? Where I'm like, well, I don't know who's dead, Mammy. What's it? Does he have a moustache? <laughs> no. Fine. Does he wear a hat? Not anymore. <laughs> and so when I go home, I like to use my acting for bad. So I go in the door and I'm like, hey, Mammy, how's it going? How's everything been? Do you know what I mean? And she's like, well, you'll never believe who's dead. And at that stage, I just... <laughs> And I basically, I basically just fall to the floor dead. Um, a great way to, like, teach children about death is with pets. You know, psychologically, it's a great way to teach children about death. So, you know, like, you buy your child a hamster, and then after five years, when it's attached to it, you break its neck. <laughs> and then you go, right, now I'm going to teach you what's hap going to happen to Granny very soon. Do you know what I mean? And then you die and they die. And the circle continues, you know what I mean? But, like, when I was growing up, we had this pet rabbit called Bubbles. And, like, Bubbles, I thought, had a great life. You know, just running around, pooing in our shoes. <laughs> I was like, there's a guy who knows how to party. <laughs> but, like, you never know what's going on inside someone's head, lads. And um, one night, Bubbles got at his hutch and he bit away at the wire in his hutch like this until it sort of came out in a long spear. And then he turned himself around and he reversed his arsehole onto that spear. And um, it, it punctured every single organ on the way up. Um, they say he died of a broken heart in the end. <laughs> so the next morning, my mother had to sort of, you know, him off the wire and um, it was up to my neighbour Jim Murphy to bury Bubbles a rabbit. Do you know what I mean? And so Jim dug a grave for Bubbles as he remembered him, which is a small little rabbit like this. But when rabbits die, they don't die as they were. They die with their arms sort of longer than their ears and their legs longer than their short lives. And so my first memory of death was basically standing in front of this grave with Jim Murphy in front of me and going, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Jesus, we give you Bubbles a rabbit to bury, to go to heaven with all the other angel rabbits. And I I couldn't believe it. There was Jim Murphy in front of me, kind of shoving bubbles into the grave with the end of his welly boot like this. And still to this day, lads, whenever I have bad sex, I can't help but be reminded of Jim Murphy shoving that flaccid rabbit into a hole that was made for a life. You know? Um, well, like, a great way to end up not dead in general is just sort of look after yourself and be into exercise, you know? And like, that's a great idea in theory. Like they say that you should really go running for your sanity and stuff. But I would rather be as mad as a pair of cats fighting to get out of a sack than go for a run. Do you know what I mean? Which is actually when I don't wear a sports bra 
quite the same thing that it looks like. Like a pair of cats trying to fight out the sun, you know. Um, there is only one exception to that rule, and that is dancing. OMG, shit the bed, lads. I love me some dancing. I really do. And I know you're all looking at me going, no, oh, Ashling, we all know what type of dancing you like. I diddly idle do do diddly diddly idle do. Hip-hop, actually. Hip-hop, you xenophobes. I love hip-hop. I really do, lads. Like, even now, you're listening to all this really good English coming out of my mouth, but inside my mind, I'm like, my palms are sweaty, knees are weak, arms are spaghetti. Like, always hip-hop. Do you know what I mean? Myself and my sister Sinead are mad into the hip-hop, and we go wiggity-wiggity-whack, you know, as soon as a new urban hip-hop street dance movie comes out. Ah! Do you know the type of film I'm talking about? It's like Romeo and Juliet, but with street dance. Do you know what I mean? The storyline's always like, he is from one form of dance. She is probably from another form of dance. She has a bit of a dead parent. He is a stripper, but really he wants to be a carpenter. Oh, <laughs> you know. She teaches underprivileged kids how to do hip hop at the local community center. Oh, but wait, the community center's going to close down. Ah. <laughs> but wait now, there is a talent show with the exact same amount of prize money needed to fix the community <laughs> cinema. Hooray! Myself and Sinead are in that cinema and we are eating this for breakfast. We're like, oh my God, the odds are really stacked against him. I don't know if he's ever going to stop being such a stripper. We come out of that cinema and we're like, hey Sinead, how are we going to get home? The only way we know how, through hip hop. Oh, 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 oh. Takes us ages to get home. Uh, but the only thing is, living in London and being mad into the hip-hop dancing as I am, I find dancing is very segregated. So like when I want to go and do my hip and my hop dancing, I have to go to a hip-hop club. And like say for example, if I was into cheesy music, I'd have to go somewhere for cheesy people. Or um, if I wanted to go and listen to funk music, I'd have to go somewhere for douchebags. You know, <laughs> there's sort of something for everyone but nothing for everyone. Do you know what I mean? And that's very different to when I was growing up. Because when I was growing up in the small town of Kildare, there was only one nightclub for about a 20 mile radius. And that nightclub had to cater for all sorts of musical tastes. Why? Because for a 20 mile radius, that nightclub was the only place for young people to breed. <laughs> And so it had to cater for all sorts of musical tastes. The DJ was a bit like David Attenborough, you know. He knew exactly what music to play to bring the males and the females together at the watering hole. <laughs> or the dance floor, you know. So it's 9pm and all the females arrive. All the females always travel in packs. And they're all very nervous, you know, we're all very nervous women. We've only had about nine vodkas, you know. We're all covered head to toe and wash off fake tan. Some of us have stood up before we've entirely finished our wee and there's a bit of a trickle, you know, and you have to go blending it back in as you walk out, you know, this sort of thing. And the whole big thing now is to get the women onto the dance floor. Do you know what I mean? So you play music that women can mime to. Yeah! Women love miming. They do! They love miming. Give it a choice between walking somewhere and following an invisible rope. A woman will always follow the invisible rope. They love miming. They're down on the dance floor going, no, I don't want no scrubs. A scrub with a, come on, Eileen. They love that in the girl areas. But there's a problem with this picture here. As a French would say, où est le coq? Where is a coq? There's no coq on that dance floor. You have to get some men down there. So you have to lay some bait. So what do all males love? What do all men love of all races, religions and creeds? What do they all love? Sluts, sluts, they all love sluts, they do. <laughs> so you play music by empowered women as the men who keep telling them to keep singing without their tops on, tell them that they are. So when I was growing up, it was like, dirty, gonna get a little on, really? And we were off and we were having sex with each other's legs, or having sex with the walls, all like this, you know. Now it's very important if you're a woman dancing that you dance like you're a man having sex. <laughs> You dance like you're a woman having sex, you look like a joyous baby. <laughs> so you're there and you go, Dirty, grung in the lung, really? And now women release their final form of bait, which is their hair. Yeah, very much in the same way a female cat will lift up her tail and release her arse scent into the wild. <laughs> a woman uses her hair. So we're like, Dirty, grung in the lung, really? And we're off and we're going mad and we're cleaning the floor with our hair and our own legs and our hair and everything's going on. The men are over by the dance floor and they're like, Jesus, there seems to be an awful lot of hair going on down in the dance floor. I think something might be afoot. That's right, lads. 
Sluts are afoot. Get you down there! But like, you couldn't just walk into that if you're a man. You could get your knob punched. Your knob at all. Be very, very careful, you know? So you have to play something that men can dance to. You have to get the men down there. What does the DJ play? Da, 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 da. Jump around! Men love jumping. Uh, they love jumping. Now, give it a choice between walking somewhere and jumping. A man will always choose to jump. As soon as a DJ sees that there's some eye contact being made, he slows things down. But not too dramatically, quite slowly, with some happy hardcore dance music. Yes, dance music is used to mop up all the Egypts around the sides who think that they can't dance. But everyone can dance to dance music. It's named after the main form of dance, which is dance. <laughs> Unlike at mime, you don't have to listen to the storyline because basically you just pretend to be doing stuff from around the house. Chopping bread, buttering the bread, pointing it, checking your Facebook. You know, whatever you want to do. Because dance music is just a series of beeps. <laughs> And then, and I'm not being xenophobic, but a Germanic person singing a sentence that no one understands. <laughs> oh, tell me why do we build castles in the sky? I don't know why we build those castles in the sky, to be honest. <laughs> the men and the women are, they're circling each other now and it's all going well. As soon as the DJ sees them circling each other, it is time to drop the slow set. The slow set is the opportunity to touch a tit. <laughs> You know? So all of a sudden you've just been having a bit of a fish to some insomnia or something like that. And then boom, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep. I don't want to miss a I don't want to miss a thing. I don't want to miss a Oh, no, no, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough yeah. She didn't go for it, she must be frigid. <laughs> and then as we know, the bouncer comes around and he says, here lads, leave space for Jesus. Leave space for Jesus. <laughs> but as we know, it's grand because after Lent, Jesus was quite a thin man. So you don't have to leave too much space. <laughs> you know? And then we don't want the babies made here on the dance floor tonight. So it is time to wrap up the evening. How do you wrap up a disco? With the Irish National Anthem. <laughs> Yay! You take your hand out of whoever's pants it's been down, you put it on your heart, and you sing, Shun of fear, no fall. How are you getting home? Don't know yet. Uh, oh, That's actually not from Lord of the Rings, it's a real language recognised by the EU. So, who's the xenophobe now? Yeah. Then you take your raffle ticket out of your bra and you go to the cloakroom to get your jacket. Now, women go and get their jackets. Men don't, because they are naturally protected from the weather by Fred Perry. <laughs> so then we all go and we go and we get our bag of chips and we go into the car park to watch the fight. Yeah! <laughs> Honestly, lads, like living in London, people are always like, oh, Ashleen, Ashleen, don't go watch the fight, don't get involved, don't get involved. He might have a knife. He might have a knife. If I don't get involved in the fight, how am I going to know what it's about? <laughs> so you go down to watch the fight and you're like, oh God, I just don't want any drama now tonight. I just do not want any drama. I do not want any drama. I don't want any drama now with this fight. Oh my God, I think it might be about me. Here, Denise, hold me earrings. I'm going in. <laughs> Sean Jr., Sean Sr., you're both brothers. Stop fighting. You both fingered me equally well. <laughs> just stop fighting about it is all. And then everyone drunk drives home. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I'm going to leave you on this. As you know, we're coming into the summer and I'm not a particularly tanned person, but um, here's a tip should you wish to appear exotic. Uh, walk around with a giant Toblerone underneath your arm. <laughs> it's like, oh, someone's been away. <laughs> uh, lads, you've been lovely, I've been well and bleh. Have a lovely evening, bye-bye.